Hello and welcome to part three of our Foxint catalog. In this part, we're going to cover sketch symmetry and mirroring, fillets, and symmetric extrudes. So in the last part, we made this uh, monster truck looking thing, but if we pull up a picture of Foxtrot, um, you'll see that it doesn't really have this uh, shape. So let's uh, kind of change some parameters around to make this look a little more accurate. So uh, let's kind of keep the width where it is now. It might be a little bit wider. So let's bump that to 3.5 and let's change our length to be a lot longer, maybe 4.75. Um, <laughs> it's a little long, that might change later. And the chassis height can actually come down a bit. So let's just try um, 0.75 there. Okay, that's uh, looking good. Um, I also wanna make these wheels a tiny bit smaller. So I'm gonna click on this guy and uh, I'm gonna kinda follow the blue line here to see where it lives. And I will open up this sketch and edit that. And we'll change this diameter to an inch and a quarter. Yeah, something like that. All right, so now we have some tiny wheels. Now the next thing I wanna add um, is gonna be those wheel guards, those things that kinda of stick out from the chassis and then uh, protect the wheel. So let's uh, make our chassis the active component here and go to the bottom and let's add a new sketch. All right, so let's use L to make a line and uh, I'm just gonna kinda guess at what it'll look like. It'll be something like this kinda. And then we'll extrude this so that it shoots up and protects the wheel. Um, so let's make this, I guess we'll need to make these parallel because it's giving me an angle dimension instead of a distance. Um, but we have a problem because if I make this wall thickness, uh, it turns red. And that's because if we look at our parameter here, I made this a negative number because I used it for the offset. So that's a problem because we can't have a negative distance. So I think what we're gonna have to do is finish that sketch for now. Um, and let's go back to this very first sketch we made uh, right here where we used wall thickness. Let's change this to negative wall thickness and then make the parameter a positive uh, 1 8 So it should be exactly the same now, just uh, now we have a positive number that we can use in the future. And make sure everything rebuilt correctly. Looks like it all worked out fine. Okay, so slight detour there. Let's get back into here. And if I do wall thickness, it's happy, cool. So let's also make this also wall thickness. And as a reminder, I'm clicking, holding down control, clicking on another line and then pressing D and that's how you add a dimension. And then I clicked on this dimension to define this dimension. You can uh, set dimensions equal to other dimensions. Let's uh, kind of define the rest of this so there's still a lot of uh, wiggle we can do here. So we can say, let's take the distance between the wheel and the wall and make that like an eighth of an inch. If we take a look at the picture, the wheels kind of stick out just past the guard. So I'm gonna say, let's grab this point and this point and make a dimension. Now you can move the mouse around to define various angles of the dimension. So like perfectly horizontally um, is like this. If I move my mouse this way, it goes into a diagonal line. And if I move it all the way down over here, see how it changes uh, the angle. So I want the vertical distance here to be uh, an eighth inch like that. Um, so now that's defined, but now we need to define uh, how long this thing is going to be. So let's take, uh, I guess we'll keep using an eighth inch since I've used it for everything else so far. So I'll select those two points and I'll move my mouse so that we get the vertical distance. And we'll say, um, actually I'll just click on this guy. 
so that they match. So there's that. And now we just have to pick what angle we want. So I think he has it close to 45 degrees. So I'll select this line, hold down control, select this line. And uh, let's just throw 45 in there. And that seems fine. So now we want to add um, this sketch also to this part here. So we have, there's a few different ways we can do this. We could do this the same way we did the drive system where we extrude this, you know, and we make, a, we make a shape like that and then we can mirror it and then mirror it again. Or um, we can mirror in the sketch itself. So let's try that out. Um, but first I want to talk about the symmetry tool up here. So the way that works is, uh, let's say I have a line that goes across the middle like that. And I'll make it a construction line with the X key. And uh, I'll add another line here. What the symmetry tool does is you, you pick two different sketch objects and then a center and you say there is symmetry across this line. So if I were to select symmetry tool and I were to select this line, hold down control and then select this line, it's going to treat this line as a mirror and make this line look like that line. So once I hold down control, click on this guy, it snaps into its place as if it were this. It uh, isn't fully defined, of course, because we have all these other lines and stuff that we need to add, but that's uh, the basic idea of what the symmetry tool does. And then the mirror um, tool basically does a whole bunch of symmetry constraints for every uh, line that we select on. So let's try the mirror tool out and we'll select all these lines by holding down control and clicking. And then we will click on mirror line and we'll use this right here. And there we go. We have our um, mirrored uh, wheel guard and you can see it added a whole bunch of symmetry constraints to our uh, sketch. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna select this guy, hold down control and select this guy, get a better look here and I'll hit E on my keyboard and we'll do an extrude to uh, generate this uh, wheel guard. So we wanna make sure we're on join so that it's one piece with the chassis still. Now, as far as how high we wanna go, we actually don't wanna go to uh, the top here. We wanna go a little bit higher so that it's flush with the top plates. So I'm gonna change distance to two object. We'll click on this guy, and then we'll say offset of uh, top bottom thickness. And there we go. So I think I also wanna have a little section in the middle here um, that our top plates can key into. So I'm gonna go back into the sketch and add that. So I'm gonna make some lines I'm going to click on this point and we'll do something like this and then we'll make a line from here to here. So I want this line to basically be the same as this. It's like an extension of it. So let me hide this body because it's getting in the way of me clicking. So I'll select this and this and we have a few options. We could do parallel or we could do collinear. Either will get the job done. And then same thing with these collinear. Um, now, here's one disadvantage of using the mirror tool. Uh, I had to add the line to both of those. You saw when I added this here, it didn't automatically generate a line for us. So making us uh, or mirroring with uh, sketches isn't as good as mirroring with uh, components and features. So that's something to keep in mind, but I figured I'd better show you the option. Um, so there we go. We'll finish that. Um, we'll re-enable this body and let's edit the uh, extrusion to also include this. So now we have a little uh, channel going through the whole thing. And there we go. So now let's add the uh, fillets on either side here. And a fillet is basically taking a flat surface and rounding it. Keep chassis as the active component. So I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to get the fillet um, tool open. And I'll click on this edge. And you can see if we move this arrow around, it turns the edge into a rounded corner. So if I also hold down control and click on this one, uh, we can apply that to multiple edges. So this, what we want is a perfectly round feature like this. 
But the problem is if we use a fixed value, um, it's not parametric anymore. If we make the part shorter, it'll turn into something weird like that. If we make the chassis taller, um, then we end up with something like this and it isn't perfectly round anymore. So let's do chassis height plus uh, top bottom thickness plus top bottom thickness. And let's put all that in parentheses and then take that divided by two. And there we go, we have a nice round uh, fillet. And no matter how we change the height or anything like that, it'll automatically adjust to keep this perfectly round shape. Um, now, instead of doing top bottom thickness twice, you could say top bottom thickness times two. Um, I'll do that actually, because I think that looks nicer. And there we go. So oh, we need to do that to the other side also. So I'm going to hold down, or I'm going to select that fillet again, and uh, I'm going to hold down control to also select these edges. And there we go. And then there's one more thing we want to add here. If you look at a picture of Foxtrot, you can see that there's this bevel that kind of goes around the edge here. Um, so we can do that by pushing F to make a fillet. And let's try it on this line. And I'll keep selecting all the way around here, not the face, uh, all the lines that kind of go around this inner perimeter. Like that. And if we drag this in, you can see it kind of rounds that edge, it bevels it slightly. So we get something like that. Um, let's see what an eighth of an inch looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So we'll hit enter there and check that out. Now we have our bevel. So with that done, we can mirror this over to the other side. So I'm gonna hit S, select mirror, and make sure chassis is still active. Um, and then I'm gonna select that extrusion, hold down control, and do that first fillet and the second fillet. Then our mirror plane will be this one right here that kind of cuts the uh, chassis in half down the middle. And uh, I'm sure optimized won't work. Nope. <laughs> Features, you, you, and you. Mirror plane. And uh, yeah, let's just keep it on identical. There we go. So that's all set. And our wheels will be nice and safe. So let's make this the active component and hide these sketches so we can kind of take a look at this thing so far. All right, so let's add our, our pivot point for the lifter arm. So that's going to be back here. It'll just be kind of like a pillar with a hole through it, and uh, we can add our arm to that. So with our chassis as the active component, I'm going to create a new sketch, and I'm actually not going to put it back here. I'm going to put it here on the uh, Z, Y plane, I believe that is. And uh, this will give us a side view. And I want it to be here kind of at an angle. So let's use the project tool so that we can capture uh, like the base and then the back. And we'll hit okay there. So now we can use these points in our sketch. I'm gonna use L to make a line and I want it to be on this line here. I don't want it to be in the center. I'm just gonna click on a random point kind of. And that'll go up here, then it'll go to the back and then angle back down somewhere there. If I, if I put my mouse on this point and then drag out you can see it's kind of uh, showing me that it'll be uh, a coincident of this line. So we'll go with that. And let's actually extend that line out. If we look at this perpendicularly, we also want a circle to be around here. And this is what we'll put an axle or a bolt through to uh, hold the arm. We want this guy to be centered and then maybe a number six bolt. Um, so just off the top of my head, I know that a number six is a 0.138 inch. And then since we don't want it to be, you know, an impossibly tight fit, let's add um, slip fit to that diameter. And we get something like that. Now let's add a line that goes from here, the center, to uh, a random point on the circle here. And this will be parallel to this. So we'll say, you know, however, how, wherever we put this uh, circle, we want the top to extend like an eighth inch 
above that and we'll make that a construction line. So let's actually uh, position this circle because now you can see wherever I move the circle the top will follow. Um, so we're going to want it here just about. So I'm going to make a line from these guys and then go in here to get a center line and put that on the center point. We'll make this line a horizontal vertical line. That'll also be a construction line. We'll say top bottom thickness plus an eighth inch. So if we make the top or bottom thicker, it'll raise up um, or lower the hole so that it's not too high or too short. So that's looking good. Let's make this like a half inch. It doesn't need to be so massive. Um, so what else needs to be defined? So if we if we move it around, you can see the uh, this line kind of jumps all over the place. So we, we actually want this line to go through this point. So I'm going to select those two and use the coincident tool. Now we have that uh, lined up. Now we just need to pick uh, where we want this exactly. So I think we just want this to kind of poke out of the back. So I'm going to select this line and this point and make that a coincident. And there is our fully defined pillar. So let's extrude this. And you might be thinking, oh, how are we going to do that if, uh, you know, it's in the middle? So if we hit, if we select this face, hit E for extrude, um, you know, instead of going this way and making another that goes that way, we can actually change one side to symmetric and it'll extrude from that, uh, that plane in the middle both directions. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can make this like 0.5 inches total. So let's do quarter inch and that'll make it uh, a 0.5 inch pillar and there we go we could also add some fillets to these lines to make it look a little nicer and we can just keep it at 0.25 I'm pretty sure this isn't going to change so it's not the end of the world if I have to go back and edit that value um, and why is this so weird Ah, it's supposed to be an eighth inch, not an eighteenth of an inch. There we go. Now we have a lot more uh, meat to keep our bolt in place. So there we have it. Now we have our wheel guards, and then we can start working on the arm in a bit, and uh, as well as get all the other guts in. So that will do it for part three of our fox and catalog. Uh, you may notice that this video was a lot shorter than the second part. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to do shorter videos or longer videos, so uh, leave a comment on what you think I should do, and uh, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you like the video, comment if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe so you're notified when future videos come out. Thanks for watching.